All right, cool. Cool wings, here we go. All right, guys, welcome or bienvenidos to the pandemic pinup happy hour today. If you can't tell, we are celebrating. And today I'm going to share some education, culture, and drinks with you guys having to do with Dia de los Muertos, which is Day of the Dead. So I love my job because there are these really neat little opportunities I get sometimes like this, where I get to teach people different things about different cultures. I'm going to go ahead and say I am not Hispanic, at least not that I'm aware of. I do speak Spanish. I grew up a lot of my life in a country called Costa Rica, but I have tried to mold my career in a way that has allowed me to travel or work with people from different countries and different cultures and just absorb any information they have so that I can pass it on to other people. Not everyone's fortunate enough to be able to travel or to be able to speak other languages. So I feel like if I can bring a little taste of those cultures to you guys, um, literally and figuratively, then we're all better for it. We're all better people when we are more tolerant and also more understanding of other things that go on in the world. So, Feliz Dia de los Muertos, and we're going to learn so much stuff today, and I really hope, I have a feeling my class that's in the Zoom room is not very brave, but I'm really hoping they will leave because at the end of class today, I'm going to be teaching how to do mariachi yells. So we'll see. Maybe they'll need a few drinks, but maybe they won't do it. I'm going to do it for you guys, and I hope you practice at home. But what I wanted to describe or explain first was a little bit about the holiday itself. So Dia de los Muertos is actually a two-day celebration. Most people think it is only November 1st, but it is November 1st and 2nd. It actually dates back, I think you can trace it back about 3,000 years, give or take. And it used to take place for a whole month. And people would just celebrate all of their deceased relatives and ancestors. It is not a day of mourning. It is not a sad holiday. It's not supposed to be spooky. It is really just a way for them as a whole country and culture to honor the people that came before them. So part of the celebrations involve food, and drinks, and dancing, and mariachis, but the most important part is called la ofrenda, which translates as the altar or the offer. In this particular case, it means the altar, and the altar is this setup that they do to kind of put all of the things that they're going to use to pay homage to all of their ancestors. So you usually see something like a table with a cloth on it. Sometimes it's in a whole room that's been decked out, and there's four things that you will always find, and then outside of that, people get creative. But the four things you will find on any ofrenda altar will be water, candles, pan de muerto, also known as bread of the dead, and marigolds. All of these things are meant to guide ancestors or the deceased on their long journey to the afterlife. So candles light the way, water and bread in case they get hungry or thirsty, and marigolds have a really nice aroma, so it's meant to lure them towards the promised land, if you will. So I don't have all of those things. Um, I do have Topo Chico, which is sparkling mineral water. I have marigolds, and I have my candle, and I already ate all my bread. So sorry, but I'm not sorry. But I thought it would be really interesting for y'all to know that. A couple fun facts. La Catrina, which is a very, very recognizable character. I'm kind of dressed up like her today, but it's that female skeleton that we see on a lot of the posters, a lot of the movies, if you've seen like that Coco movie. La Catrina was designed by someone named, if I'm not mistaken, Jose Guadalupe Posada, and he is a printmaker and did a lot of art back in the day. It was not an original piece or icon of Day of the Dead, but it became one after it got used so often. So I have my little Catrina here. And then the other fun fact is, I know we are all familiar with the sugar skulls that you see everywhere. People dress up like them. They make cookies, all kinds of stuff. They used to be real skulls. <laughs> you see these actual human skulls because that's what they had and they were actually honoring the dead. But thankfully for us, and probably because of a lot of health code violations, they are now made of sugar. So they're also really tasty to eat. <laughs> but let's start off with some cocktails. Um, I've designed three cocktails for different reasons. We're going to go over them. These are in no way traditional cocktails for the holiday. They're just kind of my way 
of paying homage to a very beautiful festival that happened. Oh, the other thing. The reason it takes place for two days, not one, as most people think, is technically today is Dia de los Inocentes, which means they celebrate all of the deceased children. So you'll see a lot more games in the streets. You'll see a lot more kids out, a lot more playful nature. And then the second day, November 2nd, is usually to celebrate all of the adults. But we're just going to celebrate everybody because I only get one day with you guys. So for our first one, we're going to do something I'm calling dancing in chanclas. Chanclas are flip-flops or sandals. Um, in a lot of Hispanic cultures, if you know anyone who grew up in a Hispanic household, they will tell you that chanclas are not only good for footwear, but also for discipline. So in the South, we use a lot of wooden spoons to you know, spank a kid that might be out of line, but chanclas are the weapon of choice of a lot of Hispanic mothers out there. But they do a lot more than just spank their kids with chanclas, they also dance in them. So that's how I like to remember the Hispanic mothers that have graced me with their knowledge, and we're gonna make a cocktail in tribute to that. So you're going to need a cocktail shaker, and we're going to be using uh, a couple ingredients. And I know I sent out the recipes or the ingredient list beforehand per usual. So this will be the one that has the reposado tequila. However, sometimes the universe sends you a message that you should do something differently. And I met this really awesome person this week that introduced me to this really interesting tequila. So I've kind of made some changes because I was like, oh, okay, the tequila is really interesting. I'm gonna play around with it. And then I got a bag of Mexican candy, which happened to have a candy of the same flavor and name as the tequila I was introduced to. So the universe is telling me, I must use this tequila in my cocktail today. So if you don't have the tequila I'm gonna share with you guys, that's fine, go ahead and use the reposado, but then get yourself some and try it the new way. So for the traditional dancing in chanclas, you're gonna need two ounces of lemon juice. Lemon and lime are not the same, but if you don't have lemon, it goes better with lemon. So two ounces of fresh lemon juice. Let me put that in there. And I like to use agave as a sweetener when I'm using agave-based spirits. You can use honey, you can use simple syrup, but a lot of things that just are kind of made from the same plant go really well together. So part of the preparation was a ginger agave syrup. If you only have honey, if you only have agave, if you only have simple syrup, that's fine too. But we're gonna use an ounce of our ginger agave syrup. And if by chance you did make this at home, um, when you taste it, I try to provide the recipes in a way that they are very flexible for different palates. So if you don't think it's gingery enough, just double up on that ginger next time you make my recipe. If it's too much, then half it next time. So let's see. Now we're gonna use a half ounce of Grand Marnier or orange liqueur. I actually have this one today, which is Matilde. It's also a very nice orange liqueur, but Grand Marnier will get the job done as well, if not better sometimes. So a half ounce of orange liqueur. And then let's talk some tequila, guys. So if you've done any of these classes with me before, I have done a lot with Altos Tequila. I'm not sponsored by them. I just like it. Plus, it fits my budget, and it tastes good. So that's a great combo for me, in my opinion. But that's what we were going to use. And then the universe sent me Piña Loca Tequila, which is actually made in Texas, which makes me even happier. But check it out. This logo is so cool. Like, how do you not like that? Look at that. It's a cool dude. So we're going to use Piña Loca tequila. So it'll be, instead of just kind of like a really nice ginger tequila lemonade, it's going to have a hint of pineapple in it. So I'm super excited about that because it just adds a little fruitiness. I tasted this the other day. It's a little on the sweet side, not in a bad way. Very easy to sip on its own, but it mixes really well. So we're going to use this, but if you only have the reposado, use that. And then if you need to find out where to find this, you can let me know and I'll reach out to the universe that sent this to me and find out where you can get it close to you. We are not going to skimp though. We're gonna use an ounce and a half, okay? No baby drinks. If it's from Texas, we gotta pour it big. Everything's bigger and better in Texas, as we say. 
So we have those ingredients. Let's go over this one more time. We have two ounces of lemon, one ounce of our ginger agave. Oh, we can find this at Total Wine. All right, so the piña loca can be found at Total Wine, guys. Also know it's very accessible in price and tasty. Again, things that make me want to get things. So one uh, ounce of the ginger agave, then we have an ounce and a half of our tequila, a half ounce of the orange liqueur, and we're gonna add ice to our shaker and shake it up. Okay, here we go. So up 10 to 15 seconds. And if you're feeling fancy, I know y'all have seen me shake quite often. I do the up and down, I do the back and forth, but you could also do the shimmy that people do when they salsa if you want to. <laughs> All right, so once you shake in your cocktail, this is a sort of a highball. We're gonna add in some Coco Chico um, or sparkling mineral, mineral water, if that's what you have. Coke soda will also do the trick. I like to add my mixer to my shaker and then pour it into my glass because then it mixes it twice and it does all the work for me. I also have this super neat glass from Tia Maria Mole and it's got a chakra on it. So I'm gonna use this for dancing and chunks. I'm telling you, the world just sends you messages sometimes. So I'm gonna ice my glass. I'm gonna add about two ounces of sparkling mineral water to this cocktail. This is gonna be a lot larger than the glass I'm using. I would definitely recommend this in a highball glass, but I couldn't pass up the opportunity to use a glass that had a chunk lot on it. So I'm gonna strain this over my new ice. That is. And then to garnish it, keeping with all the things that we're trying to use that are symbols for the holiday, a little marigold here. I'm going to pin it to my glass. Got that. Go ahead and put that right in there. And then, like I mentioned, the universe sent me this candy called Piña Loca. I didn't even know it was a thing but it's a sucker for piña and chile because a lot of Mexican candy has that spice to it. And I'm not mad at it, I'm not mad about it. So I'm gonna put that in there too. And that'll give a little bit of spice as it's getting into the drink. So guys, that is dancing in chocolate. Salud, as they say in Spanish, or cheers. You could totally make a punch. Um, I am definitely making a punch out of this. It's a very large drink, I know. But I mean, you gotta go big or go home. It's a holiday, people, holiday. All right, moving on, we're going to do one of my favorite ones for today. And this is called Mi Querida Katrina. So Katrina is our nice figure over there. And I thought it would be really nice to honor an icon that wasn't traditional, but became a part of it. Because I feel like we go through life and we adopt all these things as we go along. We meet people, we adopt new words mannerisms and i don't think there's any issue with wanting to celebrate things that are happen in other cultures even if it's not your culture as long as we're doing it in a way that respects the culture that it comes from so as long as we're knowing where it comes from telling people about it and not claiming it as our own we should be able to celebrate with everybody let's help them celebrate their things and they can help us celebrate ours and be a more inclusive universe so mi querida katrina is also a shaken cocktail so cocktail shaker in hand. We're going to use one ounce of lime juice. Again, freshly squeezed is always best, but if all you have are those bottles, that'll get you through the day. One ounce, oh, I'm sorry, stop, everybody stop. <laughs> I was reading the wrong recipe, it's not lime juice, that's the next cocktail. I got excited, I'm sorry, we're gonna put that lime juice back. That was really easy. See, even professionals made mistakes, guys. So we need one ounce of cucumber juice. So I've got that here. I don't have a juicer. So whenever I say cucumber juice or a juice that's not something you can squeeze, it's usually me putting it in a blender. If you have a juicer, I'm sure it would turn out 10 times better. So one ounce of cucumber juice and all of the apologies. <laughs> one ounce of cucumber juice. 
And then we're going to use a three quarter ounce of orange juice. And then I had everyone make a hibiscus simple syrup. If you don't have a hibiscus, you can absolutely use just a regular simple syrup. If you have a flavored simple syrup you'd like to swap out, I know there's all kinds. We've also used Cocktail and Sons a lot um, on this class because I just really love their stuff. If you haven't had their Fashionola at home and you're lucky like that, then you could use that. So we're gonna use a half ounce of our hibiscus. This is also a really popular ingredient in Mexico and other Latin countries. They do a lot of stuff called Agua de Jamaica. And that's the name for the hibiscus flower in Spanish. They make teas and juices and ice creams and candies. Oh, so good. We're gonna go back to our orange liqueur. We're using a half ounce of that. And then we're gonna use a spirit called Sotol, which is kind of newer to some people. I feel like it's kind of starting to find mainstream. This one is made in Texas. It's honestly the only one I've had. Um, it's really good, so I'm kind of scared to try any other ones because if they're not as good, I'm going to be very disappointed. Um, but Desert Door has two different ones. They have their regular sotol, and then this one's aged in oak, and it's my favorite because if you could take like all of the great notes of whiskey and all of the great notes of tequila and then put them in a beautiful bottle, that's kind of what this is. It's very unique, but it's also familiar enough to be very accessible. So we're going to use an ounce and a half of sotol, preferably oak aged. And put that in our shaker. And we're gonna ice it and shake it. So it's about the same thing. We're going to dirty dump this cocktail um, for the most part. So that usually means that you take all of the contents of your shaker, ice included, and just throw it into your cocktail glass. You don't have to strain it over new ice. Um, so you do want to give it a lot of a good shake. You want to do about 15 to 20 seconds. Okay. All right. Also, if you've never been to Texas, um, I mean, first of all, that should be rectified very quickly. But if you ever have the fortune to come here or if you are from here, then perhaps you've heard of a fantastic establishment called HEB. It is our local grocery store, guys, and it's amazing. One of my favorite things about it is when the holidays come around, they have some of the coolest things to go with the holidays. So I found this set of measuring cups that I'm not using as measuring cups. I will say they were not labeled properly for the amount that they hold, but they make amazing tiki glasses. So check out my very apropos tiki glass or this cocktail, super excited. So to serve this, like I said, we're gonna dirty dump the cocktail right in there. I made some very special ice. I took a bunch of dried flowers and layered them into an ice cube. So I'm going to put that right on top so it's really nice and decorative. And then being in a tiki glass, I'm going to garnish the absolute hell out of this. So I prepared a few things. We got some orange slices. I took those behind my ice cube. And then I've got a cute little cucumber ribbon. Put that in there. And then when I make the syrup for the hibiscus, syrup, the flowers are in there, they're sticky. There's not really a good way to reutilize them a lot. So what I usually do is once I've strained them out of the syrup, I'll skewer them and then keep these to the side. And when they dry back out, they're just ready to use as a garnish. So I'm gonna put that on there as well. And that guys is my querida Catrina. Check that out. I know you can't see the ice. I'll try to take a better picture and put it on Instagram. I have another one that's prettier. This is like the fugly eyes that I use for class. But the one, the nice one will be on the Instagram post. <laughs> so that's our tiki one. And then I couldn't do Mexican inspired cocktails without doing a version of a michelada. So 
Let me explain that not all micheladas are the same. They vary country to country. And in Mexico, they vary region to region. So most people I've noticed in the United States that are not Hispanic are familiar with the version that takes kind of like a Bloody Mary base and then adds a Mexican beer to it. There are also versions that have tamarind paste, uh, versions that have just Worcestershire sauce and like spicy stuff. And then if you go to like Central America, which is where I spent a lot of my life, micheladas don't have anything in them. They just come in what we would call a dressed glass. So it's just salt and lime, nothing crazy. So I kind of took a little bit of the things I liked from all the micheladas I've ever had. I'm very, very not particular to the one that has all the tomato juice in it, but I don't like tomato juice. It is really tasty for those who like it, but I wanted to do something a little different. So I designed something we call a grito so that we can drink this, feel really good about it. And then however it makes us feel will determine the type of mariachi grito that we have. So for our michelada base, we're gonna go back to that ounce of lime juice that I mistakenly used. So one ounce of lime juice, I'm gonna put it into a mixing glass. You could mix this directly in your glass. Considering it is a michelada, you wanna use a really large glass, such as a pint or maybe a 20 ounce glass. I only have a little small one with me, so I'm gonna make my base, but only use half of it. But this would be enough for a full tall boy beer. I have a Dos Equis here. So one ounce of lime, and then I have tamarind paste. I know this is not something that you think is at your store, but if you have a Hispanic section, a lot of the times you can find it. I actually found this in my Asian store and it's an Asian specialty grocery store. And it was in the section that had like stock and bouillon because they use it to make sauces, not to make juices. So it was in the savory section. So if you can't find it, just ask somebody or I'm pretty sure you can get it on Amazon. So it came out really thick. I have just a little bit of water. So I'm going to use a half ounce of tamarindo. Put that in there. And then we're gonna use some regular simple syrup. If you have agave, you could use that too. Only a quarter ounce. And that's kind of to balance it all out just because we're putting in a lot of acidic ingredients and the way that salt balances sweet, sweet also balances acid or salt. So just a little bit of that. We're going to use a bar spoon of Worcestershire sauce. A little bit of that in there. And a bar spoon of orange juice. I told you guys, I mixed a lot of ideas, but I promise, I know this all sounds really crazy, but it's really tasty. And then, Everybody remembers the DIY class from back in the day where I had everybody make saline drops. We are gonna use two drops. If you don't have a saline solution, I'll send you the link to the class so you can make one. It's really easy, but if you don't have it on hand right now, just a pinch of salt. I'm just gonna put it directly into your mix. I'm gonna use two drops of saline and one dash of orange bitters. Okay, that's a lot of ingredients. Let's go over those one more time, just in case. So we have one ounce of lime juice, a half ounce of tamarind. We have a quarter ounce of simple syrup, a bar spoon of Worcestershire, a bar spoon of orange juice, two drops of saline solution or a pinch of salt and a drop of orange bitters. So once you have all that in there, we're gonna put some ice in our mixing glass. Doesn't have to be a lot, we're just kind of mixing it so it becomes a very uniform blend. We're just going to give it a few stirs, it's nothing crazy. Maybe about 10 seconds or like 30 spins, however you choose to count. So we're going to do that. And then once we have that all stirred together, we're going to prepare our glass. So I decided to do mine with a spicy chili rim. You can do yours with salt, you can do it without a rim. They make a lot of flavored salts nowadays. You could use any of those. If you don't have salt, fun fact, you could just use any spice blend in your house. If you have like a barbecue grill chicken spice blend that you like, guarantee you can taste it. You give it a nice little savory note. A lot of those grill blends have like a little added smoke to them. So they'd also be really nice and aromatic. So when you have your glass, if you rim it, great. If not, that's fine too. And then we're gonna get, go ahead and add ice. Like I said, 
I'm going to pour about half of this in here. It's a very small glass, not a pint glass. Put that right there. And a lot of micheladas are served with straws or a form of a spoon so that people can kind of mix as they go. Um, I kind of like it sitting on the bottom for me because then I get beer and then I start to get the mix and then at the end I get like all this extra punch of flavor. That's just my preferred way to drink. Uh, and then we're going to open our beer. I like serving tiny micheladas just because if the people are drink the people that are drinking it decide that they just want to switch back to beer, then they can kind of go back and forth and double fist their drinks. So we're going to pour some beer on top. And then we're going to add one extra garnish. And I wanted to find a way to use these limes that I had that were dying. And I thought in the sense that they were going to go bad and I had way too many and I didn't need to juice them all. So what I ended up doing, instead of just making your usual like lime wheels, I made these really nifty garnishes where I took them and made them into these really neat little pinwheels. So they look like that. They take a lot longer to dehydrate, but I have a ton of these now and they'll be good forever. Well, not forever, but for a very long time until I decide to use them. So I'm gonna just go ahead and top that off. I'm gonna garnish that with our little lime. And that is a grito, which leads me to the best part of today's class. We're gonna go over Mariachi gritos, guys. Look how good that looks. Let's throw that in there. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be super tasty. I'm actually gonna taste this right now. Mmm, it's really good. Ooh, chili rim. I put tahini on it, but it's like tahini with lime. There's something about Mexican candies and spice mixes. It's just aggressive enough to make your face do things, but it keeps you coming back for more. So it's either just tart enough, or you're like, ooh but you want more or it's spicy enough. You're like, and you keep going back. Like all things Mexican keep you coming back. I don't know how they do that, but it's across the board. Their people, their food, their music, everything. So we're going to learn some mariachi yells before I teach y'all how to do this. I'm going to put this on gallery view so I can see my class. I have two faces. So is anybody willing to do mariachi yells. I'm not going to spotlight you, but if I call them out, are you going to call them back? <laughs> LG's like, absolutely not. <laughs> I knew that was going to be a thing. Nobody? Nobody wants to do them? No. Jabari said solid no. All right, that's cool. That's fine. I'm going to teach them to you anyway. I realize that it's not something everybody's super comfortable with. I know you're also broadcasted live, so that's its own thing. So if you want to practice in the comfort of your own home, that's totally, totally acceptable. But I don't want you to do it without any education. So there's a lot of different types of mariachi yells. Wanted to teach y'all a basic three. So the first one I think is going to be the most difficult because it is also the sound that people that don't speak Spanish have a hard time replicating. And that is rolling your R. So I like to call this the rolling R yell. So if you don't know how to roll your R, this is something that you should just get drunk and practice at home. It's a lot of fun. But you stick your tongue on the top of your mouth and then you start to blow out while trying to pronounce the letter R. It's a very complex move, but once you get it, it just sounds like that. Kind of like a motor running. And you can do it really loud, really soft. So if you're doing the rolling R mariachi yell, it's like the, saying the word ra, like ra, ra, sis, boom, ba, but with a rolling R and it's just really loud and really short. So it goes a little something like this. And that's it. <laughs> it's all you do, right? It's exciting. It, it gets people's attention. So it's definitely a short call to arms, if you will. People are about to sing or start partying or start drinking. So you just do it and it's just very short. So that's the rolling R. So the next one, very simple. I'm going to tell you what it is, and then I'm going to tell you what you probably think it is, and then I'm going to explain the difference. So this is something I like to call the hype mariachi yell, or the hype yell. And I will say every mariachi troupe or trope has their own names for their gritos. 
It's not necessarily the same across the board, but a lot of the yells have a lot in common. Some of them are very classic and traditional. So what I like to call the hype yell is kind of like saying the word A. So if you've ever been to like a dance party and people are like, eh, 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 it gets people going, it gets you hype. It reminds me of when I used to be a hip hop dancer and there's like that big circle and then somebody's gonna show off in the middle with their little dance moves. So this happens a lot at Mexican house parties or even Latin house parties. There's a lot of people, a lot of cultures that speak Spanish that do this. They all eat, big old potluck, they drink, and then everybody just dances. Somebody's yard, somebody's garage, the living room. And they just hype everybody up. They want you to feel like you're having a good time. So it's set, it's basically the letter A, which is E in Spanish. What most people do is say A, right? They're like A, 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 that's hip hop. Totally different vibe. So if you're gonna do the mariachi version, it's A like E-H. And that's all it is, it's very simple. It's just A, A, A. And you just do that a couple of times. And so whoever you're trying to hype, and push into the dance circle, get the groove on. So we have, and we have a, a, a. And then my personal favorite, which is a very traditional mariachi yell. This one might sound more familiar. It's been in a lot of songs on the radio. It's called the traditional yell because it's a combination of like a cry and a laugh at the same time. And Hispanic people are very emotional. Like I love it. If you've ever seen a telenovela, which is a Latin soap opera, it is very dramatic. <laughs> They're very dramatic. I have a shirt that says cries in Spanish that I wear sometimes at spring break. And somebody asked me one time, what does that sound like? And it sounds like this. Ay, Dios mío. It's just very dramatic every single time. So when you think of the cry and the yell, and then you add in the dramatic nature of that culture and how intensely they feel things, it's a combination of those two sounds. It kind of varies across the board on how much cry or how much laughter is kind of in there. But when I do it, it sounds kind of like this. And that is the traditional mariachi grito. So I really hope y'all try these at home. If you do in the privacy of your own home, nobody's gonna care. And I guarantee you, if you are feeling stressed, which I know a lot of people are, this week and next week for reasons we don't even have to go into. But if you ever need stress relief or just to laugh at yourself, make a drink and then look at yourself in the mirror very, very seriously and then just cry and laugh at the same time. <laughs> and then celebrate Day of the Dead. Remember someone that meant a lot to you and cheers to them. So that is the remainder of our class today. I hope you like these drinks. I hope you try them at home. Next week, we'll be starting off at a new time. I'm officially going back into the workforce. Um, we'll see how that goes. I'm gonna try and do these classes at five o'clock. Please bear with me as we fluctuate trying to find a new schedule. We're gonna be going into fall flavors and a lot of really cool things, sweater weather, cold and hot drinks. But if you're not in the Zoom room, you don't get to hang out with us. I just going to end the live and you can imagine all of the mariachi greatness going on in here. So if you're tuning in on Facebook or YouTube, thanks for stopping by and I'll see you next week.